Today I'm going to show you another really cool millimeter wave prison sensor. This one is absolutely tiny, but it's packed with features. And also I'm going to show you something really surprising about this sensor at the end of the video. Last week we checked out the air quality sensor and this week it's the millimeter wave presence sensor from Apollo Automation. Now Apollo was kind enough to send me the sensor but they haven't sponsored the video so I'll give you all the good and all the bad. This sensor is absolutely tiny as you can see here but it's packed with good things. So it comes with a Bluetooth tracker. Now I don't have a Bluetooth sensor to try with this yet but I have got one on the way to me because I use an iPhone and those don't seem to work with this. It's got the millimeter wave sensor, it's got a lux and UV sensor, temperature and humidity. Now I will tell you temperature humidity, although it has an offset, I would not suggest using it because of the heat buildup with the millimeter wave. A CO2 sensor is available as an option. This is really cool, it's a good quality sensor. It's got an RGB colored LED in here and I'm gonna show you a really cool into integration with that. It also has this little buzzer. I haven't tried that out yet. It's got exposed GPIO pins as well. All right, so let's have a look at the device. So having a look at this device, it's absolutely tiny. It's a nice, neatly printed little 3D case. We've got breathing spaces all over. We've got our USB-C connector on this side. And on the back, we've got a little slide out piece with the Apollo branding on it. Now just to give you a size comparison, here is a Xiaomi temperature sensor. You probably know how big those are. So you can see that this is absolutely tiny. So we plug the device into a 5 volt USB plug, search for the hotspot and put in our network and password and away you go. So now we go to our notifications, new devices discovered and there's our multi-sensor. So we go configure, submit, and that will load it up into your home assistant. There we go. Easy as that. And we can scroll down here now to our ESP home. And here we have our device. So the first thing I'll show you is this cool little demo. So as I walk towards the device, you can see it's getting closer into the zones and it's changing colors as I go through the zones. Really cool. So let's have a look at how I've created that little automation. So first of all, I went along and I created scenes. Um, so I created scenes for each of the zones. So I basically said when the Apollo sensor um, is detecting occupancy in zone one, activate scene blue. And that just goes through scene two, zone two and zone three. And then the scenes I've created is basically Apollo multi-sensor, the color on the RGB and named it the blue. Easy as that. So the sensor has a huge amount of functionality which is all pulling into the Home Assistant via ESP Home. So if we have a look at the controls here, we've got a calibration button. So that's to calibrate our CO2 levels. We would effectively put the sensor out of the window in the fresh air, press this and it would set it to the default. We've then got our RGB light. So this you can control as we've shown in the previous experiment. Um, we've got humidity and temperature, which is affected by the ESP or the temperature of the millimeter wave. Then we've got the pressure. So this is really cool, barometric pressure. Always good to see what's happening with the weather based on barometric pressure. We've got our CO2. This seems to be uh, pretty accurate. Haven't run some tests, but definitely is being affected by the local CO2 levels. We've got an ambient light sensor and a UV sensor. Really good to have those for automations that you might be looking at doing. Then we come to our zones with our actual radar. Now, the way this radar is set up is we have zones. So we can control these zones by adjusting the zone distance somewhere over here. There we go. So we've got the start and end zone for each one. So as you can see, up to one meter, one to two meters, and two to three meters is what I've got set at the moment for that little demonstration I did earlier. So you've got the zones, and then you've got these over here which is the actual gates so it has these different gates and these are set that you can actually adjust the threshold and the move and still threshold at each gate so that's quite cool so having a look inside the board 
we've got the CO2 sensor over there, we've got the ESP32, and then we've got our millimeter wave sensor over here. Now what has amazed me here is that this is the LD2410, the sensor that I tested almost a year ago. And at that time, it was a really cost-effective sensor. So I'm blown away that they've managed to control the sensor. I had no idea that you could actually do zones with this type of sensor. Um, the only thing I think that's missing here, I would have added a PIR. That's quite useful to have in conjunction with a millimeter wave sensor. Anyway, that's all for me now. Please register and like and subscribe if you want to receive more from my channel. Bye for now.